Could it be that the stories of old have some truths in them? We all know about legendary tales of knights and dragons and monsters and beasts, um, different ghosts and demons, and of course, gods, gods of the nations. And see, while the modern man can um, reject these stories as just fairy tales, the ancient people did believe in them. And um, I think it's very arrogant from us to say today how the, the ancient ones were not developed and they were on a lesser uh, developmental stage of evolution and how they were just caymen who didn't know much. So because of their superstition, they had to develop all these stories. Of course, there is a different um, angle which may say, well, these stories were just, um, you know, fairy tale stories, stories for children. Um, and stories that will gather people while they were sitting around the campfire and just, you know, have fun. But still, I want to quote a very famous author, Mark Twain, who said that uh, truth is stranger than fiction. And it is because uh, fiction is an um, obligation to stay to possibilities. And the truth is not. And this is very powerful, in my opinion. Um, today's um, St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's, pa Patrick's Day to all of you. And uh, why is his story important to all of us? Is his story about being dressed in green or drinking beer, having party and fun? Um, not really. But it, is his story also about um, going to Ireland and uh, fighting the Druids and the pagans? Not necessarily. He did have uh, this spiritual fight where uh, he was taken by force for the first time in Ireland. And then, as the story goes, um, he had revelation from God to go back willingly one day and to preach the gospel to already uh, to the already believing uh, Christians in Ireland, but also to spread the gospel among the, the pagans of that time. So see, he, in a way, did drive the serpents out of Ireland, but he did not have uh, physical fights against people. He loved them so much that he traveled there and dedicated his life to these strangers um, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in a way, he had to combat these spiritual forces, or metaphorically to say uh, serpents, and to drive them away. Um, see, um, these spiritual forces, um, the Bible calls as Elohim, or translated as gods. And these beings are way more powerful than demons, you know. Demonic possession and oppression is real. And uh, usually people um, equipped by the power um, of the Holy Spirit go and rebuke demons and set the captives free, just as Dida did. And they do this but in the power and name of Jesus Christ. But then there, there are these um, more powerful entities. There are territorial entities, uh, which you can read, for example, in Daniel chapter 10. And they're called gods. We see, we read about these uh, stories of the so-called prince of Persia or prince of, prince of Greece. And these are just not um, regular demons that you just go and you know, combat and deal with. No, these are much more serious um, entities. And how is all of this um, relevant to us today? Well, see, um, usually today we can hear two different narratives. And um, the first one would be scientific, which would, um, which would deal with the field of how. And the second one will be religious, and philosophical because they go hand in hand and that field would try to deal with who and why but for me um, these two fields do not have to be um, fighting against each other I think that's a false dichotomy we don't have to have either or we can have both I don't see um, science fighting against religion because as I said um, they deal with different uh, fields and, and approach them from different angles so I think that they can perfectly work together and also it's not that science says this or this, it's that scientists who observe data can say this or that. And even among scientists there is a lot of disagreements. And when it comes to the first narrative, the scientific one, um, 
There are actually different scientific narratives, but the prevalent one, uh, let's say that it's uh, the Big Bang, where uh, uh, through singularity, um, the universe uh, came into being. The second one would be religious or biblical narrative, uh, which is described in the scriptures between the book of Genesis um, until the book of Revelation. And um, different scholars and different um, theologians tend to find one meta-narrative or one uh, grand story, one unifying theme that um, explains every other theme in the Bible. And there are those theologians who would say, well, we see this topic or this theme to be the main one. There are different theologians who say, well, okay, we also see that these things exist, but we are leaning more on this view that we see that this theme or this topic is prevalent. And I tend to agree with theologians who say that the biblical meta narrative, or if I can say it simply the story of all stories, starts um, in Genesis 3.15, which is called Proto-Evangelion, or the gospel before the gospels, because as we know, the gospels are found in the New Testament, but uh, Genesis 3.15 is found, as we know, is in the Old Testament. So in Genesis 3.15, after the first people rebel against God, God sends a prophecy of the coming seed of the woman with a capital S that will come one day and um, conquer God's arch enemy. And um, this is why I got this icon, which, as you can see, for those who speak and can read Greek, it will say Jesus Christ as the victor. So the way I see him as the victor, not just over sin and death, but also over Satan, the ancient serpents, and also over uh, these um, demonic entities and the territorial gods and powers, which are much more pow powerful than demons, like I said. Um, so all humans, including you, you, you and me, are inevitably involved in all these stories, like it or not. And this is another reason uh, why I wanted to start with this YouTube channel. And I hope through many topics and authors and stories and testimonies that we will cover that you will slowly start to see if you're a skeptic, how is this important for your life and how are you involved in this without even choosing. Um, and I know that in the first video, I did mention that um, one of the main people who inspired me to start with the channel is the late um, Dr. Michael Heiser. But it's actually, um, there's, there's also, um, there are also more people who inspire me um, to start with this journey. And some of those are my professors. One of them uh, was um, a lovely lady called Dr. De Rose, who um, teaches um, a couple of different uh, coll um, college um, classes at, at the Moody Bible Institute, and one of them um, is called Images of Christ in the Novel. And in this uh, class, she taught us how to read um, the works of, um, of fiction, literature, right? Uh, books and novels written both by um, Christian authors or also by skeptics and trying to find parallels and comparing them with Christ so that sometimes even in the most unlike character who is deeply flawed, you would find some godly characteristics and attributes and parallel them to Bible and see someone who can resemble Christ, who can be Christ-like. And because I had to read those books and I had to write papers on those things, um, Dr. De Rose inspired me to think about this way. And this is another um, angle that I'm trying to bring in the angle, how we how to bring into the channel, how we can analyze and parallel works of fiction, including Star Wars, um, Matrix, um, Marvel and DC um, heroes, and many other works of fiction, and how we can parallel them and point them to Christ. Because you see, even in... Um, in all these superheroes, I think that we can see pretty easily the tendency in our hearts, longing for some um, 
superhero, the ultimate superhero who will come and rescue, rescue us all from something, let's say from a world disaster. So in all these movies, in all these um, TV shows, in all these um, comic books, in all these video games, there's always a hero who's coming to save the day, to kill the dragon, right? And I, dip, I deeply believed, I'm, I'm without a shadow of a doubt, I believed that this is just pointing to Christ, all the desire that we have in our hearts for this ultimate superhero. And these desires are in our hearts, regardless if we are religious or irreligious people, atheists or believers, it doesn't matter. I believe that they're there for the reason. Um, and lastly, two more things um, at the end, even though I did say in the first video that this um, channel will not be apologetic, I want to correct myself partially that the channel will not be primarily apologetic. But after thinking for a while, I realized that all these um, analysis and um, comparing, um, you know, different deities and paganism and works of fiction with the Bible and, and, and Christ and pointing, um, um, you know, all these deeds in God's inferiority compared to Christ. I have to correct myself and say, well, the channel will be partially or somewhat apologetic. Um, and um, yeah, I'm actually excited about that. Um, and lastly, um, I have a small announcement. I, um, I'm hoping that soon we will be having our first guest um, for the channel. And I'm excited about that. So please stay tuned. Um, share this video if you like it. And thank you for your time. God bless.